everyone, this is Dorothy of Dorothy's Cooking School and you are watching episode 12 of Dorothy's Private Kitchen. Now that we are still in pandemic, I noticed that a lot of people do these breads to work out their stresses. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. An apple cinnamon roll. Something sweet, something easy to do, and something that doubles as a stress. Let us go through the ingredients needed to make this bread. I still like to do bread the old-fashioned way and that means we will have to activate our yeast and sugar and water. So here in this bowl I will add our instant yeast. I only use one brand and that is Saf Instant. And then we will add sugar. And then we will add lukewarm water. We will mix this well. We mix it to make sure that we have dissolved the yeast and sugar and water. And then we will cover with a towel to make the environment conducive for our yeast and set this aside for 15 minutes. So this is how activated yeast looks like. We will now transfer this to a bigger bowl. If you don't get this reaction, then it means either your water was too hot your water was too cold or your yeast is expired. So now we will add our eggs. Make sure that the eggs are at room temperature. And then we have our melted butter. Use the best butter you can afford and the best butter that is available and then we have fresh milk mix this well and then we will add our flour And before we start mixing, we will just make sure that the fine salt is on top of the flour because if the salt touches yeast, you will slow down your yeast. And of course, we have white sugar. Mix well using a rubber scraper. I like working with breads, especially if it is hand kneaded. It gives you a very high level of satisfaction, especially when you start smelling the bread baking in the oven. Okay, now that the liquid has absorbed most of the flour. For our next step, we will dust our work surface with flour. This is one half cup of flour.
transfer the dough into our work surface. Try to scrape most of what you have in the bowl. And pour it here together with the rest of the dough. So now comes the fun part. Put everything together, fold, Push twice, quarter turn, fold, push twice, quarter turn, fold, push twice. So we continue with this process until it becomes a very smooth and elastic dough. So after a few minutes of kneading, you will get this consistency, but we are not done yet. We want it smoother, and the only way to be able to achieve that would be to throw the dough. Row. So here you can see the dough is smoother. It's smoother but not yet done. So continue with the kneading process for about five minutes more until the dough becomes very smooth and elastic. And throw. Once the dough has become smooth and that you're able to form it into a ball, this is ready for its first rising. I hope that some of you were able to be stressed by kneading the dough. So, let us now add just a little oil into the bowl. We don't even need to wash the bowl and then hold the dough this way and use it to spread the oil and the bottom and the sides of the mixing bowl and with one swift motion oiled side up cover with a piece of cloth and let rise for one hour or until double in bulk. Now it's time to take a break, make yourself a cup of coffee, or maybe drink a can of coke. See you after an hour. So now let's check how our dough looks like. Use the finger test. If it doesn't bounce back anymore, then this is done. Punch down. We'll divide this into two using a dough cutter. Set aside and for our pan, 9 by 13, it must be greased with shortening just the sides and then We will have to distribute softened butter. Classically, you're supposed to use unsalted butter. I do break rules. I like the flavor of bread when we use salted butter. But again, it's a matter of preference. So if you're happier with unsalted, I won't stop you. There, that 
is a lot of butter. Then we will sprinkle the bottom with sugar, brown sugar, so it is not too sweet. If you wish to use white, you can use white sugar as well, same amount. Or you can use half-half. Just remember, white sugar is sweeter than brown. There, so we set this aside. This is our dough. Flatten. We will roll this out into a rectangle. This is my favorite rolling pin. This is from Germany. It's not a solid rolling pin, but there's um, a steel rod in the center, so it moves. So we will roll this out as thin as we can, from center out, center down, center up. From time to time, you will have to lift to make sure that it is not sticking to your work surface. Hello to Anne's Ortega. I was just talking to her while we were allowing the dough to rise. I hope you can do this in your kitchen, Anne's, one of these days. Roll it out some more as thin as you can. Bread making is very physical, but it is very rewarding. A little bit more. More or less. Just a little bit more. Half of the dough is good for six to eight portions, depending if you like regular size or giant rolls. Okay, here we go. As thin as possible, and then. We will use half of our butter. That's a lot of butter. Spread it out. But leave this whole line or this whole edge free of butter so that it will be very easy to seal the dough later. I love the smell of my kitchen when I'm doing bread. You smell butter, sugar, flour, and all the wonderful ingredients that go into this hand kneaded dough. Okay. Half of the sugar. Because remember, you still have another half to work on after we form this. And then we have half 
of our raisins, which can even be dates, cranberries, dried mango, any dried fruit that is available in the kitchen. It can even be prunes. After our raisins, we have half of our walnuts or cashew or almonds or macadamia depending on your budget. And then we have green apple. Peel and dice. For this recipe, you need two apples. So one whole green apple. For this raw. I can already imagine the taste of this hand kneaded apple cinnamon bread. And of course, star of the show, you need cinnamon powder. Likewise, half. If you like the taste of apple pie, you can even add even just a pinch of cloves or allspice. But again, it is a matter of preference. Okay, so now that we have the filling all over the dough, we are ready to roll this into a tight cylinder. Remember this portion has no butter. Pinch the edges to seal. It is up to you if you like to cut into six or eight. If you cut into six, you will end up with 12 rolls in your baking pan. If you cut into eight, then you will end up with 16. So again, it is a matter of preference. More or less. So we will arrange this in the pan. And we'll keep this covered and work on the remaining six rolls. So here we have 12 rolls in our pan. We will cover and allow this to rise for 45 minutes or until double in bulk. After 45 minutes, let us now check how this looks like. Use the finger test. Touch if it doesn't bounce back anymore. This is ready for baking. So we will now put this in the oven, which has been preheated at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake for 30 to 35 minutes or until you have a nice light golden brown color on the surface of our rolls. So now let's put this in the oven. Now, if you like, what you have seen so far. 
please like, share, and subscribe. You will be hearing from us. We are trying to do a new episode every week. Now, if you would like to learn more from us, we do have our main classes. Just go to our Instagram or Facebook accounts to see the announcements. OMG! This is how it looks like straight from the oven. Loosen the sides with a spatula. And then working quickly, invert to a tray. OMG. This is pure bliss. Now, let me show you a shortcut. I have here a bottle of Arla. You don't need to make a cream cheese icing. You just spread this on top. Let me get some more. This is our shortcut. Apple cinnamon bread with a cream cheese spread on top. Make sure you're using Arla Plain because when I went down to the grocery this morning, they already have the cheese variant. We do not like that for our bread. Look at that, it's melting. It's blending beautifully with our bread. So as I said earlier, make bread to these tricks. So I'm, am I still stressed? No. I am happy with the outcome of our bread today. And I can't wait to get a whole piece for my merienda. There you go. Okay, one more for that little piece there. There. Okay. So, this is our homemade apple cinnamon bread. Hand kneaded to be stress. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Episode 12 of Dorothy's Private Kitchen. Thank you for watching. And thank you for supporting our very own YouTube channel called Dorothy's Private Kitchen. This is Dorothy Ferreria of Dorothy's Cooking School and you have just watched episode 12. And while we're at it, if you like her apron, our aprons are for sale. And what makes it different? Number one, we don't have metal parts incorporated in the apron. It is made of sturdy material. It has an adjustable strap so you can go lower or higher and then wrap it around so that you have a waistband for your kitchen Send us a message or comment if you would like to order this apron from us. See you next week.